Hello, and welcome to another episode of Thrive Like a Parent podcast. Today, I'm going to talk to you about something that I promise you I'm not getting political. So just please stick around because I have a method to my madness. But I'm giving you an example today that has to do with some of what's going on in the world. And it's a specific example of something that happened to me with regards to what's going on in the world. However, I think I need to make it clear. My stance on what is going on in the world is that a human is a human is a human. And my stance on that has always been that. No matter if it's Black Lives Matter or anything that's going on in the world, a human is a human is a human. And anytime there is loss of a human, it's devastating. Absolutely devastating. Now, with recent events, was I devastated to see what happened on October 7th? You bet. Does it hit home for me? Sure, because I'm a white Jewish female. Yeah, you bet. But a human is a human is a human. And I need you to know that before I speak on anything I say today. And the reason I'm starting out with that is because I shared vulnerably of how sad I was that this happened and that this took place. And I shared even a little bit on my stories about what it was like for me growing up as a Jewish female. And I God, I cried a lot that week. I felt so broken and so it was a lot. It was so hard. It was such a hard week. Um, and so many are still hurting and I don't want to it's, it's not good. It's just not good what's going on in the world. I said a few things. I was ripped apart in DMs for the things that I did say because as someone who has a voice, you're always going to say things wrong. No matter what you say, it's always the wrong thing. I was told I was a disgrace. I was told I'm uneducated. I was told um, how disappointing, unfollow. I was ignorant. I, I was like, whoa, like, whoa. Like, hold on. Like, I'd never claimed to be the expert. I never claimed that I was taking one stance or one side. I just said, I'm sad. Like, I literally just said, Hey, I'm just so sad. Like, I'm just so sad. And I, frankly, I'm so sad about the entire situation. But I do want to share with you, and like I said, I'm talking to you about this particular instance because I want to share with you something that happens so often in the world today and in our everyday lives. And it will, this conversation will matter to your life. It has nothing to do with the direct effects of what's going on in the world right now. But this example has to do with what's going on in the world right now. So I just want you to know that. So again, I was ripped apart in DMs. Um, as some were like, thank you for saying that. You know, it, it was all over the place. And... I do think that we're in this climate where you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. You're, you say too much, you say too little, you say the wrong thing. You, you know, it's, it's just, it's war, social media war. Like it's just, you're canceled. You're this, you're, it's just awful. Everyone's walking on eggshells. No one knows the right thing to say. So you have to choose your words wisely. If you don't say one word, like if you say one word a little bit the wrong way, it's like, oh, so I just said what I needed to say, and then I processed everything else on my own and still processing, like it's still going on in the world. Nothing is resolved, and I don't anticipate that it will be. I don't know if it ever will be. But an acquaintance who I was, I would say, close with in the past, our kids went to school together, hounded me. Hounded me. Why aren't you speaking more on this? Okay, like... And I I kind of explained, you know, I explained where I was at and it wasn't okay. And then it just kept going and it left me feeling unseen, unheard, like my position or or where I was at and what I felt comfortable with didn't matter, um, that it was an agenda of hers that I needed to keep going with because apparently I guess her agenda mattered more than mine, my opinions or this or that, like all the different things. And after, you know, the first message, I very kindly responded and wanted to have an open dialogue about it. And then it kept going days after it kept going. And I was like, nope, like, mm -mm. like this does not feel like a safe space. And so 
I chose to not respond because I knew that if I did respond, it wouldn't be met with conversation dialogue of safety. That's number one that I want you to hear and connection, number two. And I know for a fact you have experiences like this in your everyday life, maybe even every day, maybe with your partner or your in-laws or even your kids or your friends or your, your boss or, you know, like there's two ways conversations can go. And it's important to understand this in terms of the brain and what happens with the brain in terms of safety and patterning that safety. And we've already talked about that in one of my podcasts, but there's, when I kept getting those messages, I started to feel defensive. I started to feel like my point of view didn't matter or that my choice of how I handled things did not make a difference to her. And it no longer felt like a safe space to be like, hey, again, let's have an open dialogue. So I chose to say, I'm going to support myself in this and do what feels best and right for me, which was not respond at all. Then emotionally process that on my own and move through those slightly defensive feelings of um, lack of understanding or lack of feeling seen and heard and all the things I moved through that on my own. And I have to be honest with you, it's been a really long time since I've moved through something like that because I have a very small group of humans who I know that I can trust and I feel safe with and that I can connect with. And I, it's taken me a while to even build that with my family and like really truly be myself and be able to verbalize and say the things I need to say with my family after not feeling like I could do that for decades in my life. And I know that this is happening to so many of you. I could give you examples of maybe it's happening with your in-laws. I've had clients all the time be like, every time my kids are with my in-laws, they give them candy and cookies and toys and shit and junk. And, and I've told them, please don't like, please, we don't need this. We don't need them. They keep doing it. And they're like, it's fine. It's what it's, what is it hurting? It's a grandparent's job. And you're like, but you don't understand this is a boundary. And it's just like, hello, you're just completely violating Every like you, you like you just like nope like your opinion matters more than mine and that's again the point of this is everyone needs to feel a safe connection rather than feeling shut down and defensive right so a response like it's fine will lead you to be like no actually your opinion doesn't matter which may invoke some anger inside of you or resentment or frustrations rather than oh really. Tell me more about how you feel about this. Being open and curious and conversing and having the conversations. And I feel that's what should and could have happened with this acquaintance of mine, but it didn't. And so that's when I knew to step back. That's when I knew to say, okay, I need to take a breather for me here. And this isn't going to go where I want it to go, or this isn't going to land well. And so I'd like to help guide you and move you through how you can support yourself in moments where you don't feel seen, heard, shut down, defensive, like all the different things. Because what happens is usually it gets into a bickering, arguing match, especially with your partners. And then you're just angry and you go to bed angry and that's just not fun. Or you just don't talk the next day or all the things or you just get resentful and all like, and then it snowballs for years. I'm going to give you another example before I go into the explanation of what you can do to support the partnership or the friendship or the relationship, as well as in real time in the moment steps. Many, 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 many years ago, I used to look at John and I'd be like, what's wrong? He'd be like, nothing. And I'd be like, no, something's wrong. And he'd be like, nothing's wrong. And I'd be like, I know you like, I, like, you're not te- like, I know, like, can't like, just tell me what's wrong. Like, and I would ask him like every five to 10 minutes throughout the day. If we were like, I vividly remember at one time we were like walking through the mall going to get things done. And I was like, I'm just really upset. Cause I know something's wrong and I know you better than this. And you're not telling me like that, even that example is like push and 
have that's from a place of then he needs to defend himself. Then he needs to be like, nothing's wrong. If I had looked at him and said, Hey, how are you feeling today? Do you see the difference of like interrogation and questioning versus open conversing connection safety of, Hey, how are you feeling today? There is such a difference, such a difference. Even something like, Hey, I'd love to talk to you more about this. Such a difference. If we aren't getting those responses or if you aren't using that language, I would love for you to check in with the language that you are using. Is it accusatory? Is it, Ooh, I love you, but is it demeaning? Is it questioning? Is it belittling? Is it argumentative? Is it interrogation? It, like what, like check in to see how you individually are playing a role in your dynamic. Cause I fully take responsibility for the n- dynamic of Jonathan and I, and, um, just in our relationship, clearly I, Jonathan made the choice to do what he did, but just in our general relationship, I don't feel that it was the healthiest. And then I also think that you can take a look at how the other person plays a role in that dynamic, which I very much have done the deep dive of Jonathan and how he played a role in our dynamic as well. And you both play a part, whether it's you and your mom or you and your in-laws or you and your children or you and your partnership or you and your boss or you and your friendship. What I like to tell my clients is if something happens, and this is kind of what I did um, with this particular example, when I first was asked about it, I just responded. Like, I didn't think anything of it. I just said, hey, like, this is where I'm at. Like, you know, and then it kept going and I sat with it for 24 hours. And I tell my clients to sit with it for 24 hours because if you sit with it for 24 hours and you're still upset that your mom continually picks the kids up from school and gets them ice cream every single day after school and watches TV, even though you've said, please don't do that. And you're still frustrated after 24 hours. That means ding, 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 ding. You're going to build resentment and anger if you don't say something. I sat for 24 hours as she kept going and I was like, okay, I move through my own feelings about it first. I want you to move through your own feelings about it. How do I feel? Like move through all that, like let it out, think about it, do the, do the processing, then decide how you would like to proceed in terms of support, basically like a trigger, if you will, of like, Ooh, that revved me. Like, Ooh, that, that triggered me or Ooh, I had some processing to do around that and decide if it's something you want to t- communicate on with the other person. I made a choice that there wasn't anything to discuss there. Um, I didn't have a reason why I felt I wanted to keep conversing back and forth on this topic or this issue. So I just, I just let it be. And I also knew that it no longer felt like a place of safety or connection. And so I stepped back and I supported myself and I moved through it on my own. I want you to at least try try to like give an olive branch to try to do the communication piece. And then you can see if it's a safe dynamic or not, a connecting dynamic or not, right? You've got to at least give it a try. And trust me, there are many, many clients that I have literally walked them through this process, especially with their partnerships of like, you can do it. You can have the hard conversation. They're like, (gasps) they're like freaking out to have a vulnerable conversation literally with their partners. And you know why? The reason behind that is because we care most about what our partners think of us, what our family thinks about us, what our in-laws, what our friends, the ones who are closest to us, we care the most. And so we have more to lose in that. You also have more to gain. So don't forget that. More connection, more safety. But we fear getting shut down. We fear defensiveness. We fear getting into an argument. We fear not feeling seen and heard. And so it stops us from saying the thing. But you can say it in the most vulnerable way to where you can set up the situation to be like, hey, I really want, hey, okay, so I'll give you an example. Hey, mom, I really, I really just need to say something I don't like, I don't really need a response. I don't really, I've thought about it. I've thought about the reason why I want to talk to you about it. I thought about like what I want out of this conversation. And I don't really want anything from you. I just, 
need to tell you this because it's festering inside of me and I don't want to hold this resentment towards you. But I feel, you heard how I said I feel, I feel really frustrated because I have shared with you over and over that I don't want the kids to be filled with sugar and TV after school. And I'm so grateful that you are picking them up from school every day or on Wednesdays or whatever it is. Like, I, I, I can't thank you enough. Like, you have no idea how much that means to me. But I need you to know that I'm really frustrated because I've asked and it's really a boundary for me of like, I've asked like, hey, this isn't something I want for my children, for the kids. And I'm feeling resentment and frustration because that is not being respected. And you can even go into like, I know that might be really hard for you to hear. And again, I want to thank you so much for all you do for us, right? You've got to like, let them know you still love them. You're here for them because they might start getting defensive because they haven't ever had communication like this either. They might go right to the defense. But if you just give them that value again of like, I just need you to hear me again. Like, I'm so grateful for all that you do, but I just, like, I just needed you to know I'm, I just have this resentment and frustration inside because I feel like I've asked this and it's not being respected. And again, I don't need, I don't need you to defend your, like, I know you're the grandparent. I know you love them. Like you can, you know, you all the things. And again, I'm giving you a very long drawn out example but I really want you to hear that there is truly a way to give bad information or hard information or have a hard, vulnerable conversation in a very beautiful, loving, connective way. And you can try that on with your friends, with your family, with your loved ones. And if it doesn't work, especially your partnerships, especially your friends, and especially your family, the ones that you want to keep, try again and try again. But the other thing to note that I said that I don't want to bypass is that in that example, I said, you know, I know I don't need anything from this conversation. I don't need you to explain yourself. I want you to go into the conversation, take the 24 hours to really ask yourself, what do I need from this conversation? A lot of times I, it's just, I need to say it. Like I just need to say it. And if you get to the point where you're like, my brain just needs to verbalize it and be able to say it. If you get to that space and know that that's the mission of the conversation of just saying it, no matter what comes at you, possibly defensiveness, you will be able to just sit there and calmly listen because you will know that that defensiveness is all about their discomfort with what you just said rather than it being about how you did something wrong and you taking it on. That is crucial for you to hear. Now, again, this ex particular example, like I said, was an acquaintance and it was someone that I, I tried, like I put an olive branch out there to see how it would go. The con I could tell it was very, it was not going to, like, it wasn't going to be there. And I don't really see this person that often. I have not invested a lot of time and energy into this friendship. And I was okay with stepping back because I knew I didn't need anything from a conversation with her. What I did need to do was sit with it and say, nope, I'm good. Like, I know who I am. I know where I'm at with this. I, I can value myself and my own opinions and trust where I'm at with all of this stuff going on and keep forging ahead and not defending or explaining or justifying what I'm doing or why I'm doing it or how I'm doing it. Because that's only for me to have to sleep with at night of knowing, okay, Brooke, like you're happy with what's going on or you're happy with how things are going. Like you're proud of, you know, who you are and how you're showing up in the world. Like then keep going. And I have to tell you when anything happens like this in the world, anything like this, I always sit with it, process it. And at the end of the day, I don't end up saying a lot. And the reason I don't end up saying a lot about all these things that go along in the world is because I'm, I'm not a political person. That, that's just not who I am. I'm more of the, the brain person of like a, a brain is a brain. And my mission 
in life is to support brains. And if I have supported one brain, one brain a day, that's literally all I can hope for. That's all I can do is say, I know that a lot of this stuff going on in the world is because of mental health. Like I know it is, like I know it is. But all I can do is try to support individuals into understanding their own mental health and understanding their own brains. And so I'm gonna stick to that mission because whether or not I'm discussing exactly what's going on in the world, I'm still fighting for good and I'm still fighting for peace in my own way. And I have to stay true to that. And that does not need to be defended or explained. It can just be, you've got this, Brooke. Like, you know where you're at. You know what you're doing. You know who you are. Just keep going. Might there be a hiccup for me to process through and it might be a little trigger? You bet. Is that a trigger that I feel I need to work through with her, not unless it feels safe and connected. I tried and I said, okay, I, I see it. this is not going to be. And I understand there's a lot of emotions around all this stuff going on. And so that heightened state, that may not bode well for a conversation and that's okay. I have a quote from my favorite book. Everyone asks me, I want books, I want books. If you want to read one book, I, I mean, there's not like so many. I've probably already told you this one, but it's called The Crossroads of Should and Must. Find and Allow Your Passion by L. Luna. Now, yeah, this talks a lot about career and finding your passion and finding what you're good at or finding like if you, you know, are in a stuck job and like you've, you've done this path along the way of like what you should do, right? Your shoulds versus your musts. I tell my clients all the time, like, Here's a street sign, like should versus must. You should go to the event, smile, look pretty, and, and shake a bunch of hands, or you must get your ass in bed and get some rest. Like it's that easy if you break it down. There's a quote in this book by Eleanor Roosevelt, and it honestly, like I walked around with this book in my purse for months after I read it because it just like felt spiritual to like have it next to me. And like it was like this light force of like you can keep forging ahead into the path that you want in life. And it was, I read it in a crucial time of my life, which was, is this life working for me? Is this relationship with Jonathan working for me? And it was not just a, should I get a divorce from my husband? It was, if my husband and I don't work out and I step away and he doesn't make it, am I going to be able to live with myself? That's what was at stake for me to be able to continue stepping into owning my mission and owning my passions. So the quote is, it's your life, but only if you make it so. The standards by which you live must be your own standards, your own rules, your own values, your own convictions in regard to what is right and wrong, what is true and false, what is important and what is trivial. And I don't necessarily feel that we individually stand by that for ourselves. I think that that takes courage to live by that quote. That is not a sissy quote. That is not a quote that you can just be like, yep, absolutely, I do that every day. It takes courage. It takes courage to have these conversations. You may even listen to this podcast and be like, you're telling me to have courage and go have the conversation but in the example you're giving, you didn't have the conversation. I have a history and I also have worked through a lot of different friendships and a lot of different dynamics to know what does and doesn't serve me in my life. I do know that that particular dynamic, that particular acquaintance, that that's not something I need to work on or work towards in order to find more safety and connection. I am okay with allowing that one to bypass me and to let that one go. There are many in our lives where we do want to put in the effort, have the hard conversations, and lean into seeing, literally seeing if you can trust the safety, trust the connection, especially when you may be living on the defense, when you may be living... You know, I've talked to a lot of clients before where they get to the point of like screaming and hooting and hollering and they're like, you're not listening because it's like 
they just feel so unseen and so unheard. And I got to tell you, I swear to you, I lived like that. I used to be like, but you are not understanding. Like, how can you not understand this? Like, like, what do you mean? Like, but, and it was like, I would just get distraught and so upset, but it's not for me to have other people understand me and, and fight tooth and nail. What it is important is for me to stand in my own conviction and my own decisions and my own choices and honor myself. And then I get to choose who I invest my time and energy into. I get to decide if I want to invest time and energy into a vulnerable connection with my family and working through hard conversations and sitting down and taking the time to have the hard conversations and the vulnerable conversations and build safety and connection more and more and more and more. I do believe that that's the secret sauce to why so many of our clients say that the number one thing they have gotten out of working with us and specifically doing our Thrive program is that their connection with their partner has totally changed in the best way possible. And this isn't Thrive like a couple, like that's not what we're doing here. But their relationships have grown because they are willing to have the hard, vulnerable conversations and share their feelings and take the time to communicate and have the why for the conversation of like what I'm trying to get out of this and not, not tit for tat and argument it up. And it's so beautiful to watch all these connections blossom. And again, it's so crazy because that's not why they came to do this. They came to understand their own brain. They came to support themselves. They came to support their children. They came to support their lives and, and thrive. But that is a portion of your life is thriving within your partnership and your friendships and your family and your loved ones. But fighting to feel seen and heard is exhausting. Doing the internal work of owning and not defending, but owning your mission and owning where you're at, that is the more crucial piece. So we've talked about a lot today, a lot in terms of communicating with the ones we love most, but making sure that we come from a place of safety and connection rather than acquisition, not acquisition, rather than questioning and all the things. Yeah. But making sure that we're leading with more, building more safety and more connection with the ones we love most around us and choosing the ones we love most around us and making the choice to find your shoulds and your musts. Having a conversation with that particular person would have been a should. Like I should do, I should. My must was no, I must stay true to who I am. I must know that that conversation won't go well. And I must be able to stand on my own two feet and say, you've got this. That doesn't need a conversation. You can, you, you've got your own back here. I don't need to have the conversation to feel seen and heard and validated on my own opinions because I know that I'm doing what's best and right for me. And you can too in every single situation. And again, I'm going to leave you with this. Those hard conversations, those hard conversations will lead to the most beautiful safety and to the most beautiful connection if you go into them with vulnerability, honesty, and chipping away at all the walls around you. And if you have fear going into those conversations, that means that you're doing something different than you've ever done in the past. And that fear can guide you into knowing you're actually making changes in your life and making changes in your brain patterning and you're growing as a human because you're saying, 
no fear. I know that I'm strong enough to be vulnerable and have the conversation. I know that I can do this. I know that I want this. And it is okay for me to feel uncomfortable while doing this. And you can even tell the person, I know this is uncomfortable. Like I know this, it, this conversation might feel really uncomfortable. It's uh, like, I'm, I'm really nervous. I'm like sweating and this thing like, it's, it's like, this is a hard conversation. Like you can do that. You can say that. Don't hold back because what's on the other side of that is the most beautiful safety and connection you can't even imagine. And every time I get DMs, going back to the DMs, right? Every time I get DMs that you have chosen based on something I've shared with you on my page that you have chosen to open up to your partner or have a hard conversation, that's the stuff I live for. That's the good stuff. Because we all crave that. We all crave connection, love, and safety. And it's there waiting for you. You just have to go out and get it. So until next time, a human is a human is a human. XOXO, Dr. B.